Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 120. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It's July 4th week. It is. I cannot believe this. We are ending <laughs> June. We are starting July, and our baby is about to be 21 years old. I know. Wow. 21. Where have we been? Like, how are they 21 already? It went way too fast. <laughs> way too fast. It's funny. It's like you feel like toddlerhood lasts 21 years. Yes. Alone. That, that year of like two years to three years feels like it's a decade or more long. And then the rest of it is like on fast forward. I just remember when I was young... And that was a long time the ago. The earth was cooling. So was when I was young, I just remember, like, you could not wait. First, you could not wait till you were 18. Oh, yeah. Then you could not wait till you were 21. Then once you turn 21, you're going, done. Stop this, there. This isn't a big deal. Can I go back to when I was like 12 and I had no concerns in my life? Well, I honestly, my favorite birthdays weren't even 18 and 21. It was like 12. 13 <laughs> those times because you were still getting like really cool fun presents of course i still get toys for, for you just got birthday. some toys i did because i'm i'm the biggest kid we know no nah, i don't think you beat me I, really i'm 50 years old i still like to play video games i'm riding around in the neighborhood on a battery powered scooter you are and i'm 50 years old that's so true i think i have you beat when it comes to being a child maybe but here's the thing Keto has made me feel younger. I don't feel 50. I hope I don't look 50. No, you don't. But like my body doesn't feel like it's 50. I mean, I can't, I get the occasional aches and pains, but that's because of surgeries and stuff I've had. But for the most part, like physically, I don't feel 50. Mentally, I feel like I'm 20. Right? <laughs> I feel like I'm five. <laughs> No, I mean, I think about all the things that I like to do. And then every once in a while, I'll be sitting around going like, what am I doing? Like, this is something that a teenager or a 20 or maybe even a 30 year old will be doing. Why am I doing this as a 50 year old man? I think that keto really has turned things upside down in a great way mm -hmm. for us. Because, yeah, I think we've always been young at heart, yep. young in spirit, but you were limited to what you could actually do right. pre-keto. And now my body has caught up with my heart and my spirit. <laughs> and so if I can get out, act a fool on my scooter, right. ride my bicycle to the park right. like a child, <laughs> we're gonna do that and, and enjoy it. It's it's just really interesting to see like how things have changed since our eating lifestyle changed. Like the things that we do were definitely a lot more active. Something else that I enjoyed this week that you would normally enjoy as a child was all of my Amazon Prime Day deliveries coming in. And I felt like better than when I was a kid at Christmas time. Like, like you know, Christmas. I, I feel like I had more packages coming in now than I ever got on Christmas. And I ordered it. So I knew what it was, but I was like still like really excited. Do you guys get excited when you order something from Amazon or somewhere else, even if you're ordering like Perfect Keto or something like that? Are you like just kind of sitting like, <laughs> I'm so excited. Like it's coming. It'll be here tomorrow. Oh, look, the mail says it's coming today. I don't know if you were more excited for your shirts that you got for yourself or like my chicken pot pie shirt. I know. I saw that shirt. They I had cracked up. All of these shirts like on clearance on Life is Good. And I love the Life is Good message. So I bought a bunch of ones on clearance and I saw this shirt that Rachel's wearing. I'm like, that's Rachel. Yeah. Right? Like, Nonsense. that's Rachel. Nonsense. Like chicken pot pie. I mean. It works. <laughs> Just works. Speaking of Anthony's birthday, I was trying to figure out what to do with our Patreon live stream because his 21st birthday is on Saturday, July 3rd. And we usually do our Patreon live streams on the first Saturday of the month. And so I was kind of figuring things out and the following, we can't do it because you're preaching. So excited. I'm really excited for that one. 
And uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to have the Patreon live stream at 5 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, July 3rd, because we'll have the morning with him. And then I know he's going to want to go and hang out with his friends in the of evening course anyway. Will. So that's what we're going to do. Saturday, July 3rd, 5 p.m. Eastern time, we will have a Patreon only live stream. And it is for all levels of our Patreon supporters. I love celebrating every milestone with you guys. Yes. It's like you don't get the full value of how joyous something is uh -huh. unless you share it, right? <laughs> so I love it. I'm glad that we're doing that on his birthday. Let's talk about our food this week because it has been so much fun. We've been doing like ground beef and salads and lots of chicken. And I finally got my wings. Finally. finally got my wings. It's only taken us two months. I actually have a store credit because the last time we had gotten wings, they overcooked them a little bit. So I called up and they're like, no problem. We'll give you 20 free wings next time. And that's two months ago. Yeah. And they have not had wings since then. And guess what? I bought wings yesterday. I forgot to use the free 20 like coupon. You were completely blinded by, by the fact just that I could get wings. The bliss of having wings. Yes. I mean, I think you giggled about that more than you did about any of the Amazon <laughs> purchases. So like wings are back, baby. I'm curious though. I know we talked a little bit during our live stream, which again, sorry, we're really working on the internet thing that our live stream just kind of conked out. Hopefully we may have that a new solution for it. We're trying. We're it's, it's all about testing, but we can only really test it when we're live. Thanks so. for being patient. Be, thank you very much for that. But we were talking about it during our regular live stream. And that is what did everybody get on Prime Day? Because we got this really cool mandolin. Because I, I like the idea of a mandolin, but I hate mandolins because you slice your hand open when you get down to the bottom. I don't know how I've survived this long with a with a man a regular mandolin because I think of somebody like you who's really good at cooking or mm. Anthony that's really good at cooking. When you guys hurt yourself <laughs> with these appliances, like how am I going to survive it? How yeah. are me and Caleb going to be able to cook without like chopping our hand off? I am really glad for this new solution. Yes, yeah, so we found this this mandolin that's made by Dash, the same people who make like the Dash mini waffle maker and all that stuff. And we ordered a figure like, hey, why not? And it really works well. So I'm curious, like what kind of kitchen stuff did you guys get like during Amazon Prime Day. Now, speaking of deals, I did want to kind of give you guys a heads up. There will be a perfect keto sale coming later on this week. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and you hit that little bell button so that you're notified and we can let you know what the sale is gonna be. We'll be talking about some of the different things that they're gonna be having for that. And so I'm really excited about that sale. So if you need something today on Monday, don't order it yet. <laughs> Do you need something? Don't get it. Wait a couple days until the sale comes out. Yeah, well, cause save money. Yep. We have some mail. What's in the I mail, got some mail today? Actually, right before we sat down to film this, we got to notice that there's more mail. So we will feature that during one of our live streams. Okay. Because we're also going to be going camping, right? We're going Saint up to Augustine. St. Augustine, which we have not been there yet. I'm excited because we're going to be on the ocean. Me too. And I can't even remember the last time I was in St. Augustine. Probably as like a little kid. Well, we went to Bucky's there. There's a Bucky's in St. Augustine. But that is all we went to there <laughs> yes. was just that. I mean, and if you're going to go someplace to St. Augustine, like, hey, stop at Bucky's. Yeah. Any, any excuse for Bucky's is a good one. Yeah. So we will be doing the live stream premiere for this from St. Augustine, and then we're going to attempt to do another live stream while we're up there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so hopefully we can get through for that to be talking about part of our June challenge. Yeah. But I got this package here. It's kind of a, a familiar looking box. Looks a lot like a chow club box. Yeah, but it, it, they just mailed it to us in the chow club box. But we do have later on this week, on July 1st, the opening of the July chow club box. So again, make sure you're staying tuned for that. There's a note in here. It says, Joe and Rachel, you were both always so giving and helpful by providing Aww. so much information to the keto community. And for that, thank you very much. 
Joe, I know you didn't want to give away your recipe box, oh. but you did. Oh, so my So I wanted to give you one back in return. Oh, my god. I love goodness. the box myself, but I know it'll never, I'll never use it. So I'd rather give it to someone who will enjoy it. Wow. By the way, Carmel Macchiato is the best. Love you guys. Dulce Zinger, a.k.a. D-Daz, a.k.a. Oh my and Dulce. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. You have no idea how he grieved over this recipe box. This thing is awesome. How nice. Oh, oh wait, she left the she left some keto chow in here. Oh no. Well, maybe you meant to. Maybe this wasn't her favorite. And she gave us recipes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wow. Yes, I was upset that I had to give it away, but I'm glad because it did go to Alex. So, yes. You know, it went to good use. But thank you very much. I really appreciate this because I've got so all these much. cards and they're just kind of thrown all over my desk. You bless this man in a way you just don't even understand. An orange cream is actually a good thank flavor. Thank you for thinking of us. Thank you very, very much. It's beautiful. Okay, let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we're gonna come back with all our comments. What do you like in your chicken pot pie? Chicken. <laughs> well, one would hope, but is there an ingredient that goes with it that you enjoy? Um, I don't know. I used to like the chicken pot pie. I just wanted the gravy. I didn't even care about the vegetables you would put in there. I just wanted the chicken and the gravy, maybe like a couple of peas or something like that. Mm -hmm. What about you? I actually like curry flavoring. Oh, really? Yeah, I like kind of like a curried chicken because mm -hmm. again, it's the gravy. It's all about the gravy, the sauce and how it's seasoned. Yeah. Speaking of chicken, I almost forgot we have a new challenge coming. Right, starting on July first, we're not gonna do like a monthly like keep it moving kind of challenge because it's it summertime. Moving. But keep it moving. <laughs> uh, but we are starting a brand new or bringing back mm -hmm. the chopped challenge. I am so excited and fearful of this because we've let you guys decide what's gonna be the food for this month. What are the ingredients? You know what you should be fearful of. The fact that we did right before we started filming this, got a message that there are two packages and lately people have been talking about Rocky Mountain Oysters. Please let it be black licorice. Snails, black licorice. And like frog legs. So there is a chance somebody sent you like a can yeah. of frog legs or something. I think it's totally black licorice. I seem to remember Matreya last week showing us cans of slugs. Ooh, it could be anything. It's <laughs> oh. like Fear Factor Mail Edition, right? I'm actually really excited about this challenge because I did like the Chop Challenge. I like bringing in new proteins, but what I really liked from the last time we did it was seeing all of the posts on our Facebook family group and seeing all of the creations that all you guys were making. So please, with the new challenge, make sure you keep it up, make those different recipes, put pictures up on the Facebook group, put them up on Instagram. I'm really excited about seeing like some of the different creations. Now on our website, every single day, we will have a list up there with what today's or that day's actual ingredient is along with a recipe over on the other side of the page. Yeah, I mean, what was it like the oxtail? I mm -hmm. was like very fearful of it. And I saw somebody responding already saying like, ooh, on oxtail day, I'm going to make like a family recipe for Jamaican style oxtail. And I immediately was like, you better share that recipe right. because I know if it's something that is like passed down in your family and you, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Right? Yeah. Like I want grandma's recipe for some of these new protein sources, because again, I'm afraid of oxtail. Right. I've never had it before, but every time I hear somebody talk about it, it's usually like, I love this and right. here's why. So yeah. now's my chance to use some of these ingredients that we don't use on a regular basis in some newfound recipes. Well, let's move into some of our different comments and our subscriber of the weeks from our Facebook group. We're gonna start off with this week's Keto College Adjunct, adjunct professor, professor of the, the Week. Perfect. If you're new to our channel, this is where we go into our Facebook family group. There's a link for that down below. And we find a post from somebody that we consider really inspirational. Yeah. And we like to share that in case you're not on Facebook or maybe you missed that post. 
And this week's is from Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Debbie said, I just want to tell those of you who have had one of those days where you worked so hard all week and then in an instant you messed it up in one day and backtracked your weight loss and your progress. Been there, done yeah. that. I know. I've been there more often than not. It's going to be okay. Just get back up and get back to it. You can do this. And to the people who think no one cares about or even sees your progress and all of your hard work inside and out, it doesn't matter if anyone else notices. It only matters that you wow. know. Don't lose sight of how far you've come and how strong you are. Remember at your why and remember your worth. You are amazing and you can do this. I love you guys. Man, Debbie, you are on point. <laughs> Talk about like an entire seminar in one post. That's right. I need reminders of all those things. Yeah. And I love where she was talking about, don't worry. Yep. Whether or not anybody is for you or against you, it's about you, it's about your why, get back to your why. Yes. And if you put that out in front, you can make better decisions. That's right. You know, if I have the thought of spending more time with my kids, maintaining, regaining, propelling my mobility, it makes it a lot easier to pass on things, Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get into some of the subscriber of the weeks because we actually have a couple. Now, if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. There's a link down below. If you're not a member of it, go join it. Stop right now. Pause. Stop what you're doing. Go down, hit that link, go join the Facebook family group because there are lots of people in there who are there to motivate you, to share your wins with you, to pick you up out of the dumps when you're not having a great day, to share recipes, to tell you about deals. And we always ask you to share your story because your story is going to impact somebody. I know you're thinking like nobody knows, nobody cares, but there is. There is somebody out there right now that is going through what you are going through now or what you have been through and they think they're alone. And when you share your story, you're gonna give them the motivation to keep going. So it's really important. And if you don't have Facebook, you can send us an email at stories at twocrazyketos.com and we can share it that way. And while you're down there hitting the button to join our Facebook group, make sure you're also hitting the like button down below and also that you are hitting the subscribe button on this channel because it is completely free. But more importantly, make sure once again, you are hitting that bell button so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. Now, the first subscriber of the week that we have this week is Gifty. Hey, Gifty. Gifty said, started being serious about keto January 10th, 2019. Since then, I've lost 65 pounds. Wow. No more joint pain, no more menstrual pain, and overall, I feel great. Thank you, Keto. Starting weight, 218.9. Current weight, 154.2. Wow. Goal weight, who knows? Who knows? Look at that. <gasps> Gifty. Oh my gracious, girl, you are absolutely gorgeous. Wow, and I love your dress too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, congratulations on your success and thank you so much for talking about menstruation. That's a hard non-scale victory to share because it just seems so personal, mm. but I have to agree with you. My menstruation before keto was super messed up. Mm -hmm. And it's not surprising, right? Because if overall you are unhealthy, right. you know, it it impacts every part of your life. And now that we've been on keto, it has really straightened out my menstruation too and it's like a whole happy blessing that, again, we just don't talk about enough. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, next one is from Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Kelly said, I almost didn't post this. The left picture is five years ago. I weigh about the same as I do now, but I lived on lettuce and no fat at all. Wow. I felt so sick and I hurt all the time. My hair was falling out. The right is now. I'm a ketovore and I'm living a much happier life. That's so good. I eat real food and I feel so much better. Wow. I need to remember that skinny isn't the way to be happy and love life. The scale doesn't always tell the truth. Oh my goodness, that's so true. Wow. Is that amazing? That is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Because I've been in that situation too, where I was calorie restricting to get myself down in weight, but I was sick 
-hmm. from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And that's what I was gonna say. I remember the first time you lost weight just eating nothing but oatmeal and Green. yogurt. You didn't look healthy. You, no. Your face was emaciated. You looked like anorexic. You mm -hmm. just did not look healthy. I wasn't eating. And we were all like, you have got to do something. And I know that there was a part of you felt like we were trying to undermine your weight loss. But yeah. you were so concentrated on this number, but you weren't getting any nutrition. Like your hair was like, literally, I would run my hand through her hair it and it would out. just come out. Clumps. So there's such a huge difference now where you look better. You know, maybe the pounds are like a two or three pounds more than then, but you look so much healthier. Thank you. And same for, for Kelly. And thank you so much for going ahead and sharing this because I am really praying that somebody that is thinking I'm just going to starve myself or I'm going to super calorie restrict, you know, they're, they're thinking about doing this and they will turn around yeah. and make the U-turn for keto because of what you've shared. Yeah. Okay, we do have one more subscriber of the week, and this one is Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa said, thank you for adding me. I've been doing keto for two years, one month, and one day. Wow. Ups and downs. I started at 276. Lowest is 188. Great job. But I had some company visit, uh, come visit us in Florida and add that on with all of the holidays and COVID, and my weight went kind of crazy. I saw Keto Chow, came across your YouTube videos, and decided to do at least a 30-day Keto Chow Challenge. Awesome. Enjoy b watching both of you. On Friday, we'll be one week in Keto Chow, two meals a day, and I'm down 10, 10 pounds. pounds. Oh, Look Lisa. Look at the difference. Way to go. Wow. Oh my gosh, and I need that shirt with the puppy on it that you have. <laughs> that is adorable, but awesome. Way to go. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying, though. covid and when you get company and just the year that we have been through, I'm just so thankful that we're on the other side, yep. you know, starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. knowing that it's not a train yeah. is like, has been really <laughs> a blessing. But yeah, we are back on track. That's right. Okay, let's get into some of the comments. We're gonna start off with our YouTube from last week. And the first one is gonna be from Shanta. Hey, Shanta. Shanta said, okay, so I just wanted to get this off of my chest. YouTube, don't you ever unsubscribe me from their <laughs> channel again. I was like, why didn't I get a notification for this video? Okay, now that I've got that off my chest, y'all are the best. Aww. And I watch all the videos long as YouTube leaves me alone. Right? I'm ready for July 1st. I need to plan out meals and change up the pork since I can't do those. May still cook them up for the kids. Oh gosh, Shanta, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, now if you aren't aware, sometimes YouTube is kind of funny and it just randomly unsubscribes it people no from our channel and other channels also randomly like comments you leave just disappear like we get a notification that you left us a comment and then, and then it's vanished i go to answer it or heart it and it's nowhere to be found so that's just a youtube thing so every once in a while again make sure you're going down and checking to make sure you are subscribed i just actually had it with somebody else that we subscribed to and i was like huh it their video showed up in my like recommended but I'm like, why isn't it showing up in my feed? We and took then that recommendation already. When I went and looked, I realized I'm not subscribed to her anymore. Well, and a lot of times, if you don't see us for a while, like popping up a notification, check your bell button again, because sometimes it unclicks it for you. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. She says, my daughter called me crying because she was worried I would die early because of my weight. It really kicked my butt to get started and stick with it. You guys have helped a lot with education and motivation, sending hugs. Wow, Rhonda, what an honor to be a part of your journey. Thank you. And also thank you to your daughter for just kind of coming to you with that vulnerability that she cares for you. I think every child, whether they express it or not, you know, are thinking about the health and well-being of their parents and really wanting the best. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't say it. I mean, I did not say it to my dad. Yeah. I did not tell him, I want you to stop eating what you're eating. I think it's time for us to do something about it. I failed to do that. Right. And I think to myself, I mean, I, I'm not going to live quagmired in guilt and frustration over that. You know, you need to move on because the time has passed and there's nothing I can do about it now. But I wish that I would have said something to him mm -hmm. and maybe have made a change. Yeah. 
Okay, next one is from AC. Hey, AC. I always have to determine how calorie worthy a food is. Yeah. LOL. Yeah, we were talking about that last week and that is definitely something that I look at. Not so much for me, the calories, but I definitely look at the carbs. And it's not really like with normal things like hamburgers or no. something like that. I don't even consider carbs when it comes to like a recipe that we're making. But when I'm looking at products, if I'm gonna have a little snack, I will always sit down and go like, are those carbs worth it? And it, it sends back to, you know, that cookie thing, the chipmunk. And I know a lot of people commented, they really like them. Yeah. I just didn't, but we say it all the time. Taste is subjective. It sure is. You know, we're willing to try some of the other flavors if we can find them because birthday cake, I know, that's, that's a, a hard flavor to nail. I think I would have put peanut butter yeah. in the in the keto It's kind of hard to screw up peanut butter. Yeah. But again, it, it, we had to go back in that. And one of the reasons that I personally would not buy them or recommend them is because I look at something and I'm like, is that one bite? Is that worth 10 carbs or whatever it may be? And that's kind of how I rate anytime I try something new. Is it worth it? If it's like a quarter of a carb, it's worth it. If it's, you know, 20 carbs, not worth it. Like we really want to try the new ice cream sandwiches, right? From Rebel Creamer. Yes. We get a lot of messages from people that are like, hey, will you guys do a review on them? And every time I go to Walmart, I pick up that box and I turn it over and I'm like, how many carbs? And, it's and I tiny. put it back down. Right, right. But you know, what's great about everybody's personal keto journey is worthiness mm -hmm. is subjective also. That's right. Just like taste is. That's right. So for, for Joe, you know, I you are like all about the cheese. Right. So for you, you're like, oh yes, it's worth it. Instantly, right. he goes into a cheese corner and it's like, yes, this is completely worth it. Whereas right. I will approach cheese and be like, meh, I'd rather have something sweet I can do without the carbs, you know, in whatever cheese thing you're but doing. But you'll turn to gum. But right. I will turn to gum and you would be like, I would never spend my carbohydrates On in a piece gum. of gum. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm all about it. So yeah. it's totally subjective. Yeah. So uh, next one is from Susan. Hey, Susan. She says, when you come to Omaha, there is a restaurant nearby that has Rocky Mountain oysters. <gasps> they even have a festival for it. That sounds good. A Rocky Mountain Oysters Festival. <laughs> I love that they came up with the name Rocky Mountain Oysters because if you said what it actually is, no one would eat it. No one would be like, Balls. <laughs> I was gonna say, you I'm love saying it. balls. You should be, I, I can't even imagine what you would be like if they put them in front of you. I, pr I mean, I'm the only person who would be more apt to eat it because it says balls. But everybody else needs to have it packaged in kind of a really prettier Rocky Mountain oyster. Sounds like just something lovely, right? Next one is from Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Zoe said, I love all the smell good stuff, including incense diffuser, scented oil, candles, Etc. I have dogs and guys in my house as well. Yeah. I love the warm amber type, vanilla uh, vanilla type scents, holiday floral, etc. I swap scents out during the seasons, like warm apple pie, pumpkin cheesecake in the fall, and sweet tea in the summer. I am right with Zoe. I love celebrating the seasons with new smells. So it's like as much as I love what we've got going on right here with summer smells, and it's usually like citrusy smells I tend to go to in the summer, but when it's the fall, they have to take a back burner and we've got to have all of the apple pies and pumpkins. And then when Christmas time comes, every room needs to smell like a Christmas tree. Yeah, well that's Anthony. Anthony wants to bring Christmas tree year round. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want to smell a it's Christmas summer. tree in like September. That's right. Don't want to smell a Christmas tree in February. It needs to smell like, like vanilla. December, you're good there. In February, it needs to smell romantic. And for some reason, vanilla is my like romantic smell. Uh, next one is from Melody. Hey, Melody. Melody said, I stopped using candles and I went to the melt when I got a 191 mass, 191 pound master wow. who sits down and moves the furniture oh. with her butt. I love the blueberry from Sensei. Oh my gracious. Well, I think that Don't that is- Don't ever say the dog is like big. No, yeah, like that Mastiff just absolutely, you know, made Tabitha into like a little tiny puppy baby because 191 pounds is nothing to nothing to joke about, right? Yeah, no. Uh, next one is from Confident and Fit Mom. Hey girl, she says, so it's a wing shortage because they couldn't get people to work in the processing plants. Oh, okay. Then the chickens aged out from wing status uh, Quaker steak and lube the wings are now market price and it's cheaper to get a steak. 
I feel who, like that's true. Who would have thought? Right. Right? That I mean, chicken and chicken wings and drums and all that that was always the cheap cuts. Yeah. Now I saw them in the store the other day. They had chicken wings like in the in the butcher section and they were four dollars and ninety nine cents a pound. And I'm like, uh no. Absolutely not. What kind of upside down land are we in that it's like, no, put down those chicken wings. Get the ribeye. That's cheaper. <laughs> Next one is from Deborah. Hey, Deborah. Deborah said, yeah, I try to have one smell through the whole house, but I can't do incense or candles because they give me a headache. Yes, I have to agree about the scale. No matter if I eat a keto every day, I get on the scale anymore and it's like it's going up and I'm just like, ugh. What am I doing wrong? It's so frustrating. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking of working out more. Any advice would be helpful. Honestly, Deborah, I would just be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Just keep sticking to doing the right thing, making that right choice. You know, with every time you sit down to eat, just try to make good choices because it's really consistency right. that matters. It's my past was do the right thing, don't do the right thing, do the right thing, don't do the right thing. And it was that inconsistency in, in sticking to the plan that I think was the most undermining to me. Yeah. It wasn't that if I got a perfect combination, you know, like there was some magic spell that would, would make me be successful. It is consistency over and over again. And even when we talk about like, you know, frustration after COVID and stuff, it wasn't like COVID attacked us. It was during the season that COVID was going on, we made wrong decisions consistently right. in enough amount of time that we saw the scale go up. And right. if we make good decisions consistently for a certain amount of time, we will see the scale go down. Yeah, one thing I would suggest is take a look at your electrolytes. It's something that we noticed with ourselves recently is that our electrolytes were like kind of way yeah. off. We weren't consuming enough of them. But then there were days where we were consuming way too much sodium. And, and not that having too much sodium is bad, but having something like chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings and then pouring a bunch more seasoning and much more salt can bring about some like water retention. Yeah. So check out some of your electrolytes, make sure everything's on point because as soon as we got our electrolytes back where they're supposed to be, we started noticing a difference in the scale. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all the Facebook comments. So you like all this life is good stuff. Right. How is life good this week? I got to actually cut grass. I did not think I was gonna be able to cut. Cause the rain has been crazy. The rain yeah. has been insane here. We went from never having rain to like, oh my gosh, it's raining every day. And then Anthony was going away with his friends. And I'm like, how are we gonna get the church cut and all of our customers cut? And like, what are we gonna do? But I was, I, life was good. Plus, I feel good, so why not? Yeah, it's amazing. Caleb was joking that like, what is going on with our grass? Because him and Anthony cut the yard for right. us and my brother and my mom, and they just cut it. <laughs> and then after the rains with this St. Augustine grass that we have, mm -hmm. ooh, we're gonna get to go to St. Augustine and That's see right. where the grass comes from. Um, it has just popped. It's been horrible. It's so long all of a sudden. So he's right. like, man, I'm gonna have to cut that grass again. Before we get into our Facebook comments, I did realize we have one more from YouTube and I thought this was a great comment. It's from Donald. Hey Donald. Donald said, I look at keto as I can eat whatever I want, but I choose not Ooh. to eat bread, corn, sugar, potatoes, etc. It's a choice that I make to stay healthy. Donald, and that's I smart. And I love that because yeah, people talk about keto being restrictive and I think it's too restrictive. And he's like, listen, you can eat whatever you want. I'm choosing to not eat this. Wow, that- and I love that. That puts you in a whole different mindset. Yeah. Because the thing is too, when, when, you're, when you're sitting at your plate and going like, you know, should I eat this or not? Who's, who is your police? Yeah. Even if someone says, I'm the self-appointed keto police and I will be judging your, your food. No, you don't get to be that. I'm in charge, I choose, this is what I choose, and I'm gonna enjoy what I'm eating, which mm. I think is is great. Because sometimes when you're like, well, I have to do this, I'm I, who, who is holding you accountable right. except for yourself? Yeah. Okay, let's get into the Facebook comments. The first one is from Pat. Hey, Pat. Pat said, I have two non-scale victories from this week and I just had to share. Yay. Number one, I used to dread going to the dentist. 
Every time I went, they would find more cavities. I would need another filling or a root canal or a crown or a tooth pulled. I've had perfect exams since I eliminated sugar in wow. 2018 when I found Whole30. I've been keto since 2019. Number two, I'm short. Aww. So in group photos, I would always get put up front and I would always wish I could hide behind someone. I don't feel like I need to hide anymore. Pat, I love that. Both of those things are such beautiful victories, but I think my favorite is the fact that you're not afraid to be out in front, mm -hmm. like where you belong. Precious <laughs> lady, like I, I love that. Yeah, we do not need to be searching for the back of the line anymore. We do not need to cast our own self behind everyone else. Right. I love that, that's yeah. so encouraging. Uh, next one is from Carmen. Hey Carmen, they say help. After my vacation next week, I plan on getting my stall handled by doing the rest of the month um, protein sparing modified fast. How on earth do you cram 30 grams of fat, 102 grams of protein, 10 total carbs into 718 calories? I have zero bells and whistles keto products, so easily available groceries have to do. Any suggestions would be great since I plan on eating the same thing on my fast days so I don't have to think about much. Okay, so here is what I'm gonna recommend to you, and I'm sure that what you're doing is you're looking at the Maria Emmerich Protein Sparing Modified Fast Protocol. It can be done, we've done it. We're actually getting ready to redo the Protein Sparing Modified Fast based on some of the things that we have learned, and uh, we will be doing a video on that. But uh, you're gonna be looking at very lean meats on those days, things like chicken breast or tuna. Shrimp. Um, you can use shrimp, egg whites, things like that. But the better way to do this, when you're looking at your protein sparing modified fast, on your fasting day, which is high protein and you can see low fat, so you're eating 100 grams of protein, you're eating 30 grams of fat, do not worry about the calories. Worry about the grams. Eat your 30 grams of fat because you need to get a little bit of fat in to help your body with some of your different vitamins and minerals and things like that. And then eat your protein, get 100 grams of protein, but if you go over on the protein, you're good. If you eat 110 grams of protein, don't worry about it because your body isn't gonna utilize the protein for calories. It's gonna utilize the fat and the fat that you have in your body. So you wanna get the protein in because that's the whole idea. It's sparing the protein. You're fasting while still giving your body protein. Therefore, you're not gonna lose any lean muscle. You're only trying to really limit that fat, which is kind of difficult. So just eat really, really, really lean. So eat chicken breast, eat egg whites, shrimp, that kind of stuff. So next one is from Suzanne. Hey Suzanne, she says, non-scale victory. Just bought a new swimsuit and it went down from an XXL to a large. Wow, that's that amazing. Is awesome. There is something so precious and magical when you get to shop a smaller size of swimsuits. Yeah. Because swimsuits, I don't care. I think even swimsuit models have a hard time putting on a swimsuit. Like right. a swimsuits make you very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So when you can go down in size with a swimsuit, I, I just feel like it's a victory that is is in a class by itself. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Uh, next one is from James. Hey James. James said, haven't been around for a while. My trip back home I'd consider successful but emotional at the same time. Wow. Many of my family members haven't seen me for over 10 years. Oh my goodness. They couldn't believe how different I looked. I contribute this entirely to this way of eating. Due to the significant changes, there were many questions asked. There was a lot of interest, and I take that as a thumbs up. Yeah. I introduced my mom to bacon grease and how to cook with it. I also left one of the small little canisters of Redmond salt behind for her to try. I am hoping that I met, left a memorable impression behind. James, you absolutely did. I, I know you did. You know, you plant those little seeds, and you... That's your part. That's mm -hmm. what you did. And then don't worry about it. Yeah. You've planted that seed. They see the amazing results that you're having. That is a super victory. And the fact that they're asking questions right. is a real win. People ask us all the time, like, how do I get this family member or this loved one to do keto with me? I'm worried about him. And the best way to get them to do it is don't say anything. Yeah. Just you keep doing what you're doing. It may take them a month, it may take them six months, it may take them two years, 
But what they're looking at is what kind of success are you having and are you going to stick with it? Because let's face it, most of us who changed over to this way of eating did lots of diets before and we quit lots of diets before. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times our loved ones look at us and be like, this is just another fad. It's going to go away in a couple months. And they're looking to see like the longevity. How long are you going to stick with this? But when they start seeing all of your success, that's when the questions start coming up. And the next thing you know, all of your loved ones are doing it with you. Uh, next one is from Kathy. Hey, Kathy. She says, do you get headaches from a lack of which mineral? Do we need more electrolytes in hot weather? Okay, so generally your headaches are going to come from lower sodium. It could also come from not having caffeine. If you were a caffeine fiend like Rachel and then you all of a sudden cut it back or eliminate it, that can cause headaches as well. Generally, when it comes to electrolytes, the sodium is going to affect your headaches, cramping is going to be potassium, and leg cramps at night is going to be your magnesium. But it's just best to have everything, you know, where it's supposed to be. You want to get about 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of potassium and sodium per day and about 300 milligrams of magnesium. As far as hot weather, it just depends on what you're doing. If, if it's hot outside, but you're inside and you're not sweating, it doesn't really matter. But if you're more physical, if you're outside, if you're sweating a lot, obviously you're going to be losing more electrolytes. So you're going to have to replace it with more electrolytes. Well, and I was just talking to somebody today who was talking about not feeling well because of the summer. And she was saying like, man, you know, it has been hot. I've been drinking a lot of water and a lot of water. And I was like, that may be part of it because you're not adding electrolytes to your water. So what, you know, minerals you do have, you are diluting right. with, you know, all this extra water. So mm -hmm. make sure you're getting in all those good electrolytes. Yep. Our uh, next one is from Renee. Hey Renee, she says, today I challenge you all to do at least one thing to make someone else happy, something completely selfless that you have nothing to gain from it. Go ahead, I dare you. I love that. I love this and when I was saw it pop up, I was just like, yes, this is awesome. And that is something that I like to do. One of the things I will do is I'll go to like the local gas station or a Dunkin Donuts or Starbucks or something like that and I'll just pay for the person behind me. And you don't get anything out of it. A lot of times I will try to do it without them even knowing I did it, like try to get out the door. Yeah. And it's just, it's such a great feeling to know that like, hey, I just blessed somebody who wasn't expecting to be blessed. Man, if you put it, like if you connected it with your scale mm -hmm. and you said, I could get on the scale or I could go do something nice for somebody else, mm -hmm. we'd get off the scale, oh, wouldn't we? Yeah. And yeah. we would be able to bless a lot more people and it would put us in a better mood. So yeah. I think I, I'm going to go an, an extra challenge and say every single time you want to go weigh this week, instead stay off the scale and do, go do something just nice like Renee is saying for somebody. I like that. See what happens. I think your morning or your evening, whenever it is that you weigh, it's gonna be a better time of day for you this week. That's good, I like that. Uh, next one is from Michelle. Hey Michelle. Michelle said, okay, so now I'm confused. I was reading some posts about allulose. I never used it before until I made the two crazy ketos muffins. Awesome, by the way. Thank you. Chronometer counted the allulose. Are we not supposed to count it? This is the recipe I put into it and I've counted 4.2 carbs per muffin for the allulose. I made 10, not eight because of it. And I wanted to make bigger muffins, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the FDA doesn't allow manufacturers to actually take it off like it's a sugar alcohol. So uh, because it's actually like a type of sugar, you can deduct it, your body doesn't digest it the same way, but a lot of people do total carbs. So on total carbs, they're going to count it anyway. That's like how we do. There's other people that are okay taking off your sugar alcohols, your alternative sweeteners, but not taking off fiber. I kind of fall more into that than taking off fiber. I don't like to subtract fiber, but I'm okay subtracting sugar alcohols. But chronometer has an actual setting on it. So go in there and if you're choosing net carbs, it actually has two options for whether you want to do net carbs with sugar alcohols or net cubs without them. I, I see on the lot, a back of a lot of packages, right. it's almost like you see it as a math equation somewhere else on right. the package, not even with the nutritional information. Yeah, because they're not actually allowed to list it as a sugar alcohol on the package. Okay, next one is from Bobby. Hey Bobby, they say, has anyone ever added a raw egg to their keto chow? Oh, uh, we do. We do it on a regular basis. On um, I think it tastes great. It doesn't taste like an egg. Uh, it brings a creaminess. It's really good in coffee, by the way. Take a raw egg and put it in coffee. 
If you're going to do that though, and one of the benefits by the way is you're gonna get increased protein plus the yolk becomes your fat source. But if you're going to do that, do not make your keto chow two or three days ahead of time with the raw egg. Put the raw egg in right before you drink it or like maybe an hour before and then put it back in to get cold again. But don't do it way ahead of time because that's where you're going to start risking salmonella. Once it comes out of that shell, that's where you can start having bacteria build up. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. She says, LOL, Joseph, you got to stop hitting your noggin. Look at this sign. It says, this work center has been accident free since Joe left. <laughs> Is that accurate? I am not accident prone. Oh no. I, I scrape my head. That's that's part of what happens when you don't have any hair. I think we all scrape our head, run our head, not maybe like lift up underneath the counter, but you all have hair and the hair stops you from no. number one, cutting yourself, but also when you do cut yourself or get a little bump, it's not visible anymore. You're always in a hurry. Yes. And you, like for every one time I bump my head, I feel like you bump your head five times, I, at least. I have physical jobs though. I get it. I mean, my thing is, I definitely cut my legs shaving yes. quicker than the average bear. Like, I have a solution for that. I, well, I need to slow down my showers. No, Cause I'm trying to get solution. dressed like a mom that gets dressed like you have five minutes starting now. I have a better solution. What? Just don't shave your legs anymore. Grow my own pants? Yeah. Okay. It's perfect for summer. We have one more, and this one is from Gary. Hey, Gary. Gary said, I've been on low-carb diets at least four times, and they have worked well for me as far as losing weight and improving health. However, I always went back to eating like I used to, or even worse. This time, I feel things are different, and my plan is to stay on keto for the duration. Good, Gary. I'm almost 72 years old, and I'm doing intermittent fasting and keto. I've lost 157 wow. pounds over 15 months. The Two Crazy Keto's website and some other sites also have been an inspiration for me and an invaluable resource. I especially enjoy Keto on the Couch. Thanks, Gary. I'm always entertaining, gain valuable information on each posted video. The other members and their stories are extremely invaluable, especially when you have a spouse who doesn't understand how this all works and doesn't have issues with overeating and carb addiction. Yeah. My wife, Nancy, however, is starting to understand since I have showed her excerpts of Keto on the Couch videos and other sources of information. Anyhow, thanks, Joe and Rachel. Wow, Gary, you <laughs> blessed us so much with this. Like, thank you. I'm sorry to tear up because like, this is awesome. This is this is good tears, right? 157 pounds lost in your 70s. I just mm. wanna put that right there. That a lot of times we think when we're in our 60s, 70s, 80s, there's no reversing. Whatever yeah. is here is here to stay and this is how we're going to end our journey. You've got a brand new life. I mean, you've lost an entire person right. off of your body. Right. And yeah, I love the fact that now your wife is noticing and at least trying to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. That is so exciting. Thank you for yeah. letting us be a part of your journey. Yeah, and once again, if you, if you read through that comment, what is he saying there? Because he's doing it by himself, the stories that you guys put up in, in like our Facebook group and comments you put in the videos, that is what the driving force, that's what's keeping them going. So it's so important to share your stories, to share your wins, to share your struggles because there are people out there, I mean, and I'm one of them that think that like, hey, the struggle I'm going through, nobody else is going through that struggle. And when you put it up and you feel like, okay, I'm not alone. So thank you for continuing to put that stuff up. Well, I mean, everybody has the potential of being a lighthouse That's right. in their realm of influence. Yeah. And somebody right now is crashing in the, in the waves. Yeah. You know, they don't know. They don't know what direction to go in. And when you turn your light on and you share what you're doing and, and how you have struggled in the past and, and, and the success that you're having now, it can be that light that helps to guide them to the place that, that they need to be. Yeah. Well, that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you are, number one, subscribed to the channel, but you're getting ready for our new July challenge starting on July 1st. Also, don't forget to join us on our live stream on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you are a Patreon supporter, that will be on Saturday, July 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other Keto on the Couch videos, which I have linked right down there. 
Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which we have right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.